All right, welcome everybody to What's Up For You. And um, so let's start in the heart, okay? Ah, so let's first find our bodies. Let's notice where your body is in space. And then as we find our bodies, then let's go into the heart space and start breathing really nice and deeply into the center of the heart. And we're gonna exhale, exhale out from the heart 360 degrees. And then once again, deep, deep, deep into that heart space. Exhaling out 360 degrees. And again, every single aspect of you, the aspects of you that you love, the aspects of you that you're not so excited about, all, all the different facets and aspects of you on this next inhale, let's bring those all right in through the heart space and exhale them out 360 degrees. Here we go. Here we go, just allowing that restructuring as that exhale moves out. and really having a deep understanding that you can move anything through your heart space, anything that you love about you, anything that you're struggling with about you, all of that can be breathed in, out, in through and out of that heart space. And it will shift, it will transform just by moving it in that way. Yeah. It's like it dismantles the construction of whatever that belief is, whatever that challenge is. It, it deconstructs it just to be, bring it through the heart space and let it, lets it move back out into your fields <clears throat> uh, in, a, in a different configuration, in a more open configuration. All right, beautiful. When you're ready, we can open our eyes again. Mm. As the first question is, staying in my heart, especially in the presence of a dominant energy is one of my focuses right now. Mm -hmm. There are a few people that I do not feel like I manage that at all and often have a sense of, I don't like me when I am with them. Can we strengthen our commitment to ourselves through our heart? Um, yes, we can. And I think the other thing to really understand is that when you're, when you're connecting into that heart space or into that God self within you, that source self within you, you are, you're, you're strengthening that so that you are in resonance with that part of somebody else. Yep. So as you're, so as we're paying attention to our heart space and we're building that, let's say that, that love within that God source, whatever you want to call that space within, what it does is it allows us to start resonating with that part of everybody that we interact with, right? So when you come up to anybody, um, you are, from that heart space, you literally are coming up to or inviting that part of you to meet that part of them. So it's true, they may be very much in their dominance or they may be very much in their pushing or in whatever they are in um, and again usually that level of dominance or pushing comes from a place of fear right comes from a place of them 
maybe not necessarily being in that heart space or being in that awareness of themselves as love. So when you step up to somebody, instead of paying attention to the dominance, just simply set the intention that you're meeting them heart space to heart space. You're meeting them God self to God self or source self to source self. And, you know, it's, it's interesting and ironic what happens when we meet people in this place because that higher frequency is always an invitation to a lower frequency. So you're, by being in your heart space, you're literally inviting them into that, um, in your presence. And if for whatever reason, they're not interested in coming into that heart space or coming into that place within themselves, very often they have a tendency to just go away. Yeah, they just, you know, it's, but the invitation is there and to really realize what, what you are as an invitation when you are in that heart space and when you are looking for that connection. Yeah. But the minute we kind of go, okay, that, that person is in dominance or that person is in this or is in that, then we're focused on their dominance. We're focused on that, that energy of, um, and, and it's, it's great information to have initially, but let's also be clear that we can shift that because we choose to back into the heart space and then we can see that instead. Yeah. All right, next question. I believe humans are capable of energetically giving parts of themselves to another in the name of love or caring. Is the heart supposed to be our sovereign heart or is it our connection to oneness? And is it appropriate um, And is it appropriate that the question is the heart mine would get a no as an answer? Um, let me address the first part of this first and I'm not sure I fully understand the second part of it, but um, about the heart mind getting a no, but let me, let me address what, at least what's coming up for the first part of this. So you spoke about, you know, giving parts of yourself to others and that kind of thing. And I just want to, um, I'm seeing this a lot lately, especially in highly energetically sensitive souls. So I just want to address it this way. When you are sovereign, let's say, when you are sovereign in your own heart space, when you are paying attention to being in your own divinity or being um, the, the, the broadest part, uh, let's say the most coherent part of yourself when you're, when you're focused on that totality, the God self, the source self, the love self, whatever terms you like, when we're focused there, that creates an energetic field that broadcasts out from us. And we don't have to quote unquote, give anything. The moment that we have a ten, the moment that we're saying, I'm going to give a part of myself in love to this other person, this other soul, we are assuming that we know what they need. And we might not, right? We're assuming that there's some part of our consciousness that can say, I can give this part of me to them and then they'll be better. Yeah. And my, and I just, like I say, I've just seen it in a lot of clients lately and there's been a little bit of a refinement that's been happening there. So what I would suggest is instead of considering parceling out parts of your heart or, and offering those in love, simply be love. Simply keep coming back to what you actually are. 
come back to what you are in truth, which is love, what you are, who you are in truth, right? Let that be predominant. And that field will broadcast out and around you. People can take whatever they want from that field and they will naturally and organically. They won't, sometimes they'll be conscious of taking it, sometimes they won't, but you've created an invitation just by you being um, that field of consciousness. Yeah. And the, the thing that happens, and maybe this is part of why there's a heart, mind, yes, no, you're getting a, getting a no between the heart and the mind, because I think the mind wants to, the mind wants to do something. It wants to have an identity around some kind of contribution out in the world. And and we are a contribution out in the world where our very presence is an enormous contribution. And the more we know that from the inside out, the more that contribution is available, right? So sometimes there might be a discord between the head and the heart because the head saying, I want to do something for that person. I want to make something happen for that person. And the heart is saying, okay, be it, be it. <laughs> and the moment that we are it, then, yeah, then that can be, then that can be taken if it's required, but it's really not us to up to, up to us to decide what is required. Yeah, because we really don't know. I don't think anyway, I haven't, I don't know. <laughs> Let me put it that way. <laughs> so in this question, it's heart, M-I-N-E, my heart. Oh, in my heart. Okay, mm -hmm. tell me, so say the last part of that again, Sharon, because I misunderstood. Okay, so it, is this heart mine? And would it get a no as an answer? Is the heart, well, um, read the whole thing again, because I'm confused. Okay. I believe humans are capable of energetically giving parts of themselves to another in the name of love or caring. Caring. Is the heart supposed to be our sovereign heart, or is it our connection to the oneness? And is it appropriate that the question, oh. is this heart mine, would mm -hmm. get a no as an answer? Yeah, okay, now I understand. Sorry about that. So um, so let's say both and, yeah, so both and. And by that, I mean that, you know, when we are when we are paying attention to what we really are, the love that we actually are, the and let's say we're using the heart field as an awareness of that. As we use that space for that, that is, um, it, it is both a greater degree of sovereignty, meaning a greater degree of the realization of ourselves as love. And as we're in a greater realization of ourselves as love, we are also interconnected with that in, in everyone's field. It's exactly the reason why we can stand in front of a, somebody and not say anything, just, just even mentally or from our own heart space, say, I see you as love. You know, I, I see that in you. I know that that is there. I, I know that your fullness, your totality, your sovereignty, your grace, your beauty, I, that is there. That's there. When we step up and meet somebody like that, um, they have a tendency to rise up to that experience. So one heart becomes the heart. Yeah. Hope that helps. If I understood it. <laughs> All right, this one is, 
Uh, I started meditation, meridian work, and Qui-Gon. Will it help me with cataract, diabetes, and ten tenuous? Thanks. Okay, so tonight is probably, right? So, um, well, so, well, yes and no. I'm, I'm definitely a, a both and kind of girl today. Um, so yes and no. So each one of those modalities is something that you have chosen with, for your own healing process, right? And so each individual chooses those modalities and they will, they will work to the degree that they work. And what is also interesting is to whatever degree they quote unquote don't work, you will then call something else to you for the next leg of your journey. So a lot of times we say, I'm gonna use this methodology and that, and that methodology is supposed to be the thing that quote unquote heals me, heals us. Well, it's not, necessarily a methodology that heals, but the process of intending to heal, right? So again, um, and I want to really stress this because a lot of people assume that it's the practitioner that they go to, or it's the methodology that they use, or it's those kinds of things that are bringing about the healing. What's really bringing about the healing is your intention to heal. Right, the, that's how powerful we each are. The moment we say that we would like to heal and we kind of choose some, some techniques for that or some facilitators for that, those techniques and those facilitators will be a contribution to our healing um, until they're not, right? And then once that happens, we're gonna reinstate that intention again. Yep, and as we reinstate that intention again, something else is drawn to us or we're drawn to something else to do the next leg of that work. But if you allow the, one, if you allow the awareness of yourself as so powerful that when you say that you're wanting to heal from those things, that you're, drawing um, those, uh, those methodologies to you, that's, that's number one. And number two, allow it to be a process instead of the end all be all, because as you allow it to be a process, then you're open to the learning that takes place through you interacting with all of those different modalities or those practitioners because everybody has a contribution to make to your process, right? Everything you're choosing has a contribution to make to you and is in vibra vibrational resonance with you in the moment that you choose it. Yeah, I hope that's helpful. So yes, it will help with the healing process and, uh, Will it do all of it? If that's what you're asking, probably not, because we're all in a uh, we're all in a learning process, and you know it it could very well do all of it, and it may not. If we stay in the process of it, we stay in the allowing and in the contribution that it has to make for us, whatever we've chosen, it's much more likely that it will um, shift something out for you. Yeah, I hope that's helpful. Yes, it does. <laughs> um, okay, this question is, is how do you check that you're not taking on someone else's energy throughout the day? Um, well, you'll know because, well, we know in any given moment, I mean, the, we we always know because anytime you spend time with anybody or interact with anybody 
you know how you felt before that interaction and you know how you felt after. And again, it's not about making somebody else wrong or bad or making yourself wrong or bad for you know, either taking on that energy and or for them, you know, offering <laughs> that energy as part of the, the connection and communication. But so we always do already know. The trick is, is when we know, can we allow ourselves to just simply clear the energy without having to make somebody else wrong for it or making ourselves wrong for taking it on. A lot of times the reason that energy sticks and stays with us is because we've separated from our own capacity to, mm, to love even that, to be, you know, um, to be able to be with even that. So, yeah, I hope that's helpful, but we actually, you already, already do know, because you, there's not one of us who's not, we might, we might sometimes not be paying attention and not notice until like the end of the day, and then we're going back and kind of figure, trying to figure out where we took that on. But if we really just are present, if we're just fully present with whomever is in front of us, you are already noticing in that presence, oh, I'm feeling a little heavy. I'm feeling a little bit, um, I'm feeling a little anxious. I'm feeling a little, and very often you are feeling the combination of your field and their field together. And so we can even use that awareness in that moment to kind of go, wow, the energy feels a little bit like this right now. You know, um, just to bring awareness to it, both for ourselves and for that other person. Again, not from a place of blame or shame, but just from an awareness. And that'll keep that energy moving too. Yeah, I hope that's helpful. Okay, that's it on questions. Okay, so let me see if there's anything else that I can add to the conversation today. And um, in the meantime, if you do have a question or two left, give those to Sharon. Um, and I just wanna see what else might be up to share with you today. So um, one of the things that I, spoke about in the last newsletter that I put out um, was really about uh, responsibility. And I want to talk about it from the standpoint of, again, just that ability to respond. You know, we're in such this amazing time right now where you know, there's so many different realities taking place simultaneously that if nothing else, it is demonstrating to us that we can and want to be responsible for our own reality. Whatever that reality is that we are wanting to choose, we're getting to the place now where we're really needing to or attempting to or our understanding that that reality is completely up to us. Yeah, completely up to us. Where do we put our attention? What do we put our focus on? What do we make things mean? Do they actually mean that? Um, how powerful is our energy and our attention point? And, you know, we know for a fact that what we put our attention on gets bigger. And that can be anything from, you know, a car we're considering buying and all of a sudden we see them all over the place on the street because we put our attention on it. Or something that we don't like about the world that's falling apart right now, we put our attention on it and we see so much more of it, both within ourselves and 
um, you know, we, we draw to us that kind of information. So there's a, a level of responsibility, that ability to respond to our own thoughts, to our own feelings, to the information that is brought to us. And to me, response at the end of the day is really a capacity to choose. Yeah, to really be able to choose. So this information is presented to me. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be responsible for that information and I'm going to choose what I would like in my life from that experience, right? It's, it's not about the person who brought it to me. It's not about, um, you know, their dominance over or any of that. It's they've brought something into my experience so that I can choose what I would like to choose from that experience. They've done their bit because they brought it, right? But this opportunity to be responsible for what we want to choose out of every experience, let me tell you, this is going to move things quicker than anything, quicker than anything you can imagine. We're already quite capable of creating the new and living in truly in a different dimensional experience reality. And it has everything to do with what we choose in any given moment. Yeah, so that's our, that's our responsibility. That's our sovereign responsibility, sovereign right to choose. Yeah. Okay, let's see. All right, so anywhere, where, we're just gonna do a little, anywhere where there's a bit of stuff coming out of the solar plexus, ah, whose power is this anyway? You know, is it my power? Is it their power? Do I really want it to be my power? Cause I would really rather just look at it and go, oh, that sucks. I don't like that. <laughs> you know, it's like, just dump it all there. Um, so, I mean, and so let's, I mean, again, we're just acknowledging it. It's real, it's true. It's, it's part of the makeup of who and what we are. So, and we can still step into our own power, right? At the end of the day, stepping into our own empowerment, choosing to respond noticing when we can't respond and choosing response again, right? All of that is all available to us. And at the end of the day, um, we're really gonna love our capacity to respond. Yeah, we're gonna love that responsibility. Yeah, so let's pull all of that energy that's kind of stuck in the solar plexus, and just move it out. Let's move it out. Yeah, this, this is where we get empowered to do our own healing. This is where we get empowered to find the right people and the right matches to creating what's next in the world, both for ourselves personally and as a collective. Yeah. But we have to understand what we're choosing. Yeah. So we're gonna move that. Yeah, oh. <laughs> lots of stuff moving out of the gut. <laughs> so, all right, is there anything else, Sharon? Yes, one last question. Okay. So much coming in right now to be experienced and processed. Difficult relationships asking to be revisited in external reality and in memory. Mm -hmm. As if the situations and patterns are, patterns are lining up like school children to be attended to, mm -hmm. excited and want to be discerning, discerning to stay grounded and in my heart. Any comments? Yeah, again, you know, it's true. Things are coming fast and furious right now. And so, you know, I, I like the 
the image of, you know, like just the line of school children kind of coming up. And again, as we meet each one of those children, number one, we can only meet them one at a time. Yep. So, you know, give it, and giving ourselves the space and the permission to meet each of these situations one at a time, because, you know, again, first and foremost, you know, are we able to respond to this situation or, or are we in reaction? And if we're in reaction, we probably want to give ourselves a little bit of space, a little step back before we uh, move to the next one. And sometimes that means, you know, I understand you want to have this conversation with me or this confrontation with me, but I just can't have it with you right now. <laughs> it's like, I, I, I can't be, I'm not present enough to really have this conversation with you in any meaningful way. Yeah. So first giving ourselves that a bit of that buffering zone so that as these opportunities come to us, we're the one negotiating the opportunity instead of the opportunity just bombarding us. Because we know the moment we get bombarded, we're in reaction, we're not in response. So let's monitor that a little bit. And then the other piece is, is that when we are standing in front of somebody or whether it's an inner aspect of ourselves or something that's showing up externally, you know, really the next piece is, again, can we, can we go into the love that we actually are and can we intend, even beyond what that other person is saying to us, can we intend to see that in them? If they're coming back around for another go, then there's something left that to contribute. There's, they have something more to contribute to you. And maybe in the past, you have seen that contribution as something that you had to push against because you weren't in your own heart space yet. But maybe this time around, we can, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the truth of you. I'm in my own truth. I'm in my own love. I'm in my own source self, sovereign self, whatever you... And before we have any conversation whatsoever, I'm going to align with that within you. I'm just going to align with that within you. You're more likely to receive the best that they have to offer you from that vantage point than you do in assuming that they're coming around for another, you know. <laughs> uh, another attempt at getting your goat. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. I hope that's helpful. Anything else, Sherry? All right. Thank you, everybody, for making it today. And um, yeah, all my best. I will see you next time. Okay. Lots of love. Bye.